Hello everybody, I'm Plus Ultra, and I will be your guide to Slime Rancher 2. Now, in this video, we are going to be going over every single slime that is in the game, from the old ones to the new ones. I'm going to be showing you guys where you can find them, where the best place to find them is, what they eat, and their favorite food. Now, we are going to be starting off with the classic pink slime. So, with the pink slimes, obviously they're the generic ones from the first game. And their diet is everything. They eat everything. You can feed them any kind of food that you want in the game, and they will eat it. However, they do not have a favorite food. So basically, no matter what, unless you combine these with something else, these guys will always only drop one plort when they eat. And these guys can be found on every island. However, they will mainly spawn right here on the starter island of Rainbow Island. You can take a step right outside of your workshop, and they'll be scattered all about. Now, we'll move on to the second slime in the Slimepedia, which is the Cotton Slime. With the Cotton Slimes, which is our first new addition into Slime Rancher 2, these guys, much like the Pink Slimes, will spawn everywhere on Rainbow Island, and they are fans of vegetables. Their favorite vegetable happens to be water lettuce. You can find this on every single island, and it will normally be near water, as the name implies. Of course, when they eat it, they'll give two plorts. Water lettuce does seem to have a lot lower spawns than every single other thing in the game besides odd onions. So, I would highly recommend starting a farm as soon as you can with this stuff, if you plan on keeping your hopping friends around to farm for a little bit. Now, we'll move on to the next slime in the Slimepedia, which is the Tabby Slime. So, for our next cat companions, these guys will always eat meat. They will eat pretty much any kind of chicken that you can find, and their favorite kind of chicken is the Stony Chicken. This has quite a few spawn locations, normally near rock formations and boulders. There's quite a few spawn locations right here on the map for stony chickens and is a good place to farm them. Once again though, I think they have the lowest spawn rate of all the chickens, so I would highly recommend putting them on a farm with a roostro. Just to get things started a little bit easier if you want to have a cat companion around. Other than that, you're going to be waiting a while for more stony hens to spawn. So, next up on our list, we have phosphor slimes. These guys are another slime that you will definitely recognize if you've played even 10 minutes of Slime Rancher 1. They are a classic firefly firefly, firefly themed slime. These guys can spawn on every single island in every single spawn location as long as it is nighttime. These guys like fruit, and specifically their favorite fruit is cuberries. Now, with these guys, they do have a special mechanic. They uh, they don't like the light. Not one bit at all. So, if you are going to end up farming these guys, make sure you either farm them in the additional cave that you can get off of your main area, or you put up a nighttime shield. Because we wouldn't want any of our friends disappearing. Which will happen in the daytime if they stay out for too long. The same thing can happen to their plorts. Eventually, they just... pop. And then you're down a friend. And nobody wants that to happen. Next up on our Slimepedia is the Angler Slime. Well, if you've made your way off of the first island and have gone to either of the two side islands that you can unlock, these will be some of the first friends you meet if you decide to take a relaxing trip to the beach. These are the Angler Slimes. And they eat meat. Their favorite type of meat is the new addition, Sea Hens. They're interesting looking, to say the least. These guys are fairly easy to farm, and their plorts are worth a good bit in the early game, so I would definitely recommend going for them. Next up in the Slimepedia, we have another classic, the Rock Slimes. Oh, hey, I forgot to mention, by the way. The most popular place that you can find all of these uh, angler slimes around is along the beaches on either of the two side islands. So anywhere that it looks like sand, like right here, or here, you'll be able to find these guys. 
wasn't very specific about that. Okay, on to the rock slime. Have you ever wanted a pet that hates you and constantly tries to kill you anytime you get close to it? Well, look no further, because you found them. The rock slimes. This entire open area right here on the map is a great place to find them, as they are uh, quite plentiful here. These guys eat vegetables, and you can find their favorite vegetable growing on a patch right up here on this hill so you can start farming your own. Next up on our list, we have another new addition and my personal favorite, the Batty Slime. I'm going to show you guys a great place to find their favorite food and where you can farm them abundantly. Just to make this a little bit easier on you, I'm going to include the location of the entrance to this cave a little bit before we get into the information. So if you come right here on the map, this will be the first entrance to a very large cave system that will lead to the bats and their favorite food. We've arrived to our destination with my favorite new nighttime friends. So, the batty slimes will spawn in pretty much every cave that is large in the secondary island. So, either this island, or this island. In these caves, you will also find pomegranates, their favorite food. I'm not exactly sure how these guys work, but I do know that you can keep them in daytime, regardless of what the text flavor says. They will survive in the daytime. They might not get bonus food in the daytime, however. That is something you might have to check out yourself. And... These guys look really cool when you merge them with pretty much anything. But with that out of the way, let's move on to our next slime, which is a very interesting one food-wise, which I'll have to get a little bit further into once we get there. I'll see you there. Back with a colorful new addition to the game, we have the Flutter Slimes. Now, these guys are very unique because they have a brand new food source. It's not meat, it's not fruit, and it's not veggies. It's nectar. Moondo, moon, moon dew nectar to be specific. Now, this moon dew nectar will grow only from these white flowers. And the only time that you can actually get this moon dew nectar is at nighttime. So you will not be able to harvest this stuff at day, nor can you farm it. We're not exactly sure if it's able to be farmed or not yet, but from what we know, it's pretty much no. At least you can't do it at a farm. If there is a way to do it, it'll be from a decoration, like from one of these trees. However, if you look at that plant, you can see that there's still one on it. Once it comes around daytime though, all of these plants will turn to ash, and they also go to ash after about two hours, I believe it is, in game time. However, if you want to farm this stuff, wait until about 19 on your clock in the bottom right. If you want to know more about these plants, I've done a whole in-depth video covering them just to help people who are having troubles with it. But with that, we will be moving on to the next slime in the Slimepedia. One that has a very interesting mechanic to it, and that is the Ringtail Slime. I'll see you guys over there. These are the Ringtail Slimes, the very cute raccoon friends we have now. They have a very interesting mechanic to them, but we'll get into that in a second. To start off, their diet is, much like the pink slimes, everything. They'll eat meat, plants, and veggies. They're very cute, and they do like to push you around, much more than other slimes. I'm not sure why. However, these guys aren't as active in daytime, and I'll show you what I mean. Let's skip ahead a little bit. It's still not quite daytime yet, but I do forget to mention where these guys do tend to spawn the most. And along with the flutter ones, these guys tend to spawn in this general area right here. The area where I was originally showing you where the moondoo was, these guys seem to share the same spawn from all the way on this pink side of the island to right here. Everywhere around there, you will find an abundance of these guys and they will be very easy to find. However, now that we're back to it, let's jump back into daytime. Hello guys, we are back and it is once again daytime, so I will be showing you the new mechanic for these new ringtail slimes. Now, these guys, as you can see, are quite unique. They're not a fan of the daytime. 
Now, they don't die. They just turn into statues. That's it. This will happen during every single daytime. And is well with the Largo that spawns on this island over here. You also cannot feed it during the daytime. Now, if you do want to farm these guys, there is the solar shield that you can uh, that you can buy, and it will prevent them from turning into statues. So, you don't have to worry about that. Now, we're going to be moving on to the next slime in the Slimepedia, which is the Boom Slime. These guys, of course, will be seen in the magma area, and I will take you over there now. And here we are in the magma area, where, all over, you will find the short-tempered boom slimes. Now, this area is very clear. I would recommend staying in this area over here, as this is a danger area. Now, with these boom slimes, their favorite food is meat. And specifically, they like the briar hens. Along with the boom slimes in this area, you'll find those hens. There are quite a few chicken spawns around. Basically, you're going to want to look for one of the nests. Now, once you find one of these nests, they'll either spawn one of three things. They will spawn a rustro, which must be used to farm. That is the male. Hens, these guys, which will be full grown and you can feed them to, feed them, to them immediately. Or they'll spawn chickadoos which will grow into the full-sized ones. And that's really it for the Boom Slime. They're another classic from Slime Rancher 1 that most fans will recognize instantly. Speaking of recognize instantly, we're going to be moving over to the Honey Slime. And we have arrived at the Honey Slimes. Another classic. Now, directly in the middle of Rainbow Island is the best place to find these Honey Slimes. There's a ginormous abundant river here that spawns a lot of them. Now, these guys, they eat fruit. And their favorite fruit is the mint mango. Mint mangoes grow on these flat trees that you see around. Anywhere where you'll find honey slimes, you'll probably find a few of these trees. Once again, with the honey slime, there's really not much to say. They're more of a classic slime that most people already know about. But... They're basic, and this is where you can find them, and where you can get them to be your new friends. Now, next up in the Slimepedia, we have the Puddle Slime. A very unique one, that has some different mechanics to it. I'll show you what I mean in a minute, but for now, let's head over there. So, for this spot, you will need the Jetpack Upgrade. This is where it is on the map, right here. Basically, if you follow where the honey slimes were, and try and make your way up that waterfall, you'll get to here. And anywhere where there's a big abundance of water, you'll find these guys. Puddle slimes. Now, these guys don't sit in the coops, or the uh, pens, like normal slimes. You'll have to specifically build the pool of water that you can find around. These guys also don't eat food. They simply will sit in there, and every once in a while, they will plop out a plort. Now, although this sounds like they are the perfect slime, and you could just throw a hundred of them in there, and let them all mash together, and pick up the plorts at some point, not so much. These guys are very shy. Now, they're not much to bathe with strangers. However, as long as there's only three, then it's a party. So, the max amount of these guys you can have in one enclosure is four. But, even with only four, they produce plorts pretty fast, and they'll make you some good passive income. They'll definitely pay for themselves. That's really all there is for these guys. They're a very simple, but unique slime. So, let's move on to the crystal slimes. Another one of my personal favorites. Alright, we are back in the cave where I showed you where the bats spawn. And, uh, okay, here's some. This is where you can find the crystal slimes. And once again, this is the cave in the uh, Ember Valley right here. And these guys like vegetables. Specifically, they like an annoying vegetable to farm, the odd onions. Now, around here, you will find these patches of carrots. These carrots will sometimes have a chance of having odd onions in them. 
Now, once you find one of these odd onions, they're white and have a red swirl in them, you could farm them yourself. However, for the most part, it's not really worth it because they only grow about four to five odd onions and the rest of everything else in that group will be carrots. So if I had a recommendation for you, it would be to combine the crystal slimes with something a lot easier and then feed that the favorite food as that will give you two of each plort. So their food is not really worth it. Now, getting down to our last two main slimes, let's move on to the sneaky hunter slime. Hunter slimes in this game are a little bit trickier than in the other one, as there are very, very few locations where you can find small hunter slimes. Now, for my personal recommendation, right here on the edge is where you will find the hunter largo. He will be blocking this hole right here, and you can pop him by using a large amount of meat, which is their preferred food. Along with that meat, their favorite food is the roostro, which can spawn at any chicken. Any chicken spawn you can find, there's a chance you'll get roostros there. However, along with that, right here, there is a place where hunter gordos will spawn hostile. So around this area, there are three statues. One right there, another one up on that ledge right there, and then a final one down here, or up there, my bad. In these three spots, they will spawn hostile hunter gordos. They are mixed with something else, however, you can simply feed them and they will become non-hostile and they'll drop plorts alongside of it. And with that, you can combine the hunters with something else, and then you'll be able to farm them from there. Now, let's move on to our final slime. Our final normal one, at least. Back to the volcano. Back to where the Gordos are, we arrive here. At the volcano. Right here is where it is on the map much where the boom slimes will spawn. If you come up here, you will find these lava pools. Now, normally in these lava pools, they will be absolutely bursting with these guys. That was really convenient timing. Now, these guys are a lot like the water slime in a way that they don't have an area that the rest of the slimes are in. They have their own, and it is the incinerator. I'm going to show that to you guys in a second, but for now, these guys are unique. They also don't eat food, so they don't have a favorite food. Alright, let's go over there so I can show you to it, and let's wrap this up. Welcome to the home of the fire slimes. These guys, like I said, don't live in a normal pen. They live in the incinerator. Once you buy the incinerator, you have to upgrade it to get the ash trail. And they also don't eat normal food. So you can take any food item from fruits, veggies, to chicken, and you can burn that. And then that will deposit ash into here. The more you put in, the higher the ash will go. The ash goes up to about the second bar right here, and that's how you know it's full. After that, these guys will just passively produce these fire plorts. In that way, they're a lot like the water slimes who also just passively produce plorts in their little pool. But with that, that's the end of the main slimes. Now, we do have two more slimes to go over, though. And these slimes are the Lucky Slime and the Golden Slime. Now, these guys are very unique, and they're more of a treat to find, so they're the few that I'm going to let you go out and find yourself. However, I'm going to give you some tips to finding them. So let's start with the lucky slime. The lucky slime can spawn anywhere. It can spawn in anything spawn at any time. There's always a small chance that it will spawn as you're walking around. I would recommend 
always keeping two to three chickens on you just in case because when these guys spawn you'll be able to hear a very distinct sound of coins jingling kind of like if you're walking around at an arcade that's how you'll know that this guy has spawned and you're going to want to quickly grab your chickens and start feeding him he'll shoot up into the sky and fall back down you have a limited random time to try and shoot this guy as much as possible and every time you feed him he will draw money for you now with the golden slime he's very similar in a way that he can take anybody's spawn point and spawn anywhere on the map at any time however with this one it sounds more like two pieces of metal tinging together and it's not a continuous sound you will only hear the sound once and that is how you know that a gold slime has spawned with the gold slime all you have to do is shoot them with an object and they will drop this plort the one that is very clearly more expensive than all the other ones you shoot a gold slime with any object you have in here even another plort they will go flying and disappear and you will get a free 300 to 500 dollars now, of course, there is still some other things in the Slimepedia, however, they are pretty self-explanatory. But, let's go over them, just in case. The Largo Slimes, well, that's these guys. Anytime you combine two slimes, you'll get a Largo. And it's just a combination of two slimes that you can combine any other slime in the game with. Except the Water, the Fire, the Lucky, and the Gold. These ones don't combine, and they're all by themselves. Now, the next slime were feral ones. Anywhere where you see those danger signs written around, that means those slimes are feral. They'll have a red annoyed cartoon mark above their eyes, and they will actively try to attack you as you're passing through. If you do want to pass through, you can either run through very quickly, or bring some food with you to calm them down, and you get some free plorts out of it. Next up in there, I believe we have tar. Yeah, tar slimes. Tar slimes, you've seen all throughout this video, because they are extremely common in this game. Anytime that you take a Largo slime, which is the combination of two or more slimes, and then you add one more plort to it, that will create a tar slime. Not good. Those aren't what you want, as they will actively hunt down other slimes, hunt you down, and eat any kind of food so if you are going to have a lot of slimes on your farm very close to each other like i do i would recommend making sure you have an air net on every single enclosure at least because they will jump out jump into other pens and create largos and that will ruin your farm very fast or er, tar slimes and tar slimes by the way cannot be farmed in any way. They are like the bad guys of this game. If you try and put them in a pen, they will jump very rapidly and immediately break the air net and get out. So I would avoid trying to put these guys in pens. However, if you have the number one slime stage, you can show them off with that. And then finally, for the last type of slimes in the Slimepedia, we have the Gordos. Gordos are the giant slimes that you see scattered about the map that get marked whenever you discover them much like this these guys you have to rapidly feed and then they will expand and burst revealing something like a secret passageway a new door a way back home or the entrances to these islands well i hope this video has helped you out or if you've at least found it interesting Please like and subscribe, I'm a new channel, and that would help me very much so. However, I am getting closer to 100%ing this game. And if you have any questions, I would love to answer them for you, and I'll be actively down in the comments trying to help people out. But with that, that's about all I have. I've been Plus Ultra, and your guide to Slime Rancher 2. I'll see you guys in the next video.